I'm Matt Futterman from the Wall Street Journal, joined here today by Ivan Gazidis, Chief Executive of Arsenal Football Club. Ivan, welcome here from London. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Obviously, big news out of the English Premier League of late is this massive new television deal. How do you think that's just going to change the landscape of international soccer? Well, it's, it's really interesting. You know, we had assumed that our growth would be driven by the international uh, rights. Um, but in fact, what we're finding is the domestic rights, both in the last round and now again, have gone up really substantially. Um, so we still have yet to see how this plays out as we go and, and sell our broadcast rights internationally. But clearly, there's going to be a lot more revenue in the Premier League. And, and the question will be, how will that be used by the clubs? Um, we uh, have seen the growth of the Premier League over the last uh, couple of decades, but we seem to be on an accelerated curve at the moment and into a virtuous circle where the new revenues are invested in the football. Um, it means that the clubs in the Premier League will continue to bring the best talent in from uh, Europe and all around the world. The level of football will go up again, the level of competition will go up again, um, and we believe and hope that that will lead to even increased engagement and viewing figures all around the world, and, and hopefully long may it continue. Now, what we've seen in the last few years is some of the really big transfer fees and some of the you know, top wages for players have been coming from places like Spain uh, and leagues outside of England. Do you think this sort of changes the scales? I mean, it's been interesting to watch some of the big clubs in England sort of not so much cry poor, but really sort of say we can't quite compete with these these clubs like Barcelona, Real Madrid right well, now. Well, historically, it's always been Barcelona, Real Madrid, to some extent Bayern Munich, um, who have paid the biggest fees for players. That's the historical background in the game. And the English clubs were always uh, poor cousins, in a sense. Um, that, you, you've seen that changing in the last few years. Some massive transfer fees of players into England, including a couple that we at Arsenal participated in. Um, and I think that long-term trend will continue. The top club in the league gets about one and a half times what the bottom club gets in terms of broadcast revenue. So it's an extraordinarily um, uh, competitive league where every team can compete. Very different to the models that you see in Spain and in, and in Germany to some extent. Obviously there's been a lot of growth with the popularity of the Premier League here in the US where sports fans are sort of obsessed with being able to see the best players in the world. We're spoiled in that way. How much more do you think the Premier League can embed itself into the American sports psyche? And how would they go about doing that? Well you're beginning to see it happen and obviously broadcast just exposure and promotion is, uh, is the key. Uh, we've seen a great um, effort from NBC which really has propelled us forward um, has made a, the conversation has turned away from soccer as a generic entity um, you know it used to be the the ugly stepchild in the corner that you know everybody laughed at um, then it became kind of this entity soccer when is soccer going to make it and now it's evolving towards a conversation about this weekend's games which players are going to be involved um, and it's much more sophisticated. So that evolution will continue. I think we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get a, a great um, uh, boost as well by the new D TV deal whenever that happens, however it happens here in the United States for the next three years. Nowadays, if you laugh at soccer, you, you look a little bit foolish. If, if we see these clubs in the summer, like Arsenal, that occasionally comes to the US, they play these friendlies, um, Will it get to the point at some point where the Premier League brings regular season games, uh, meaningful games, to the U.S.? Well, it's a great question. You know, I think one of the things we have to think about very carefully as the league evolves is to what extent we um, retain the history, the traditions, the things that have worked so well, and the authenticity um, and credibility of the competition, and to what extent we uh, push the boundaries of that and embrace the fact that we have an incredible global following. Um, you see the NBA and the NFL bringing games internationally and obviously it would not be responsible if we didn't look at that but it's far too early to, to reach any conclusions on that. I do think the Premier League will be more on the conservative side of that. We don't need to be uh, leaders in the, in the world in terms of what we do. We need to do make the right steps for our league. Uh, we, we're on a very good path and we don't want to um, risk tripping up 
At the same time, it, you know, we have to look at the fact that we have massive followings all around the world and have to find ways to engage and activate the, those audiences. How about an FA Cup final, a League Cup final? Can we get it? <laughs> we'll take anything at this point. I think <laughs> that's, something like that could certainly happen. I mean, I, I do think, you know, the level of sophistication is such that people want to see really competitive games, really meaningful games. There's a great place for exhibition games and it's terrific, but it's not the same as a real, really competitive game. And probably no New York based premier club anytime soon. No, I mean MLS has two clubs uh, now in New York, so there's plenty of soccer in New York if you want to go and see it. Um, and uh, I, I don't see that happening in the near future. Well, if you do come, we'll be there. Great, thank you, Matt. Thanks a lot for being here with us today. It's a, it's a pleasure.